Thank you very much for, for coming. This is a very important issue. I want to I want to take everybody back for a moment, if I could, to 2004. In 2004, we had huge turnout across the country in a very uh, tightly contested presidential election. And unfortunately, Cuyahoga County was really at the center of a lot of issues when it came to eff efficient processing of people's right to vote. And one of the, the responses to that was to try to make voting by mail as easy as possible. And it really isn't appropriate anymore to call it absentee voting because absentee voting used to be when you had a, a medical excuse or you were confined to a certain space and you could not get out to the polls. And there was a public policy decision that was made at the time that we were going to open up the voting by mail process as much as possible. And it's continued to evolve over that over that time since 2004 until the point in 2008 where you had the Board of Elections really being very proactive in this county to mail out uh, absentee voter applications and then and then process them. Now, what's happened as a result of that? Well, it's been more convenient than it ever has before. And the horror stories that we heard back in the 2004 election about people waiting hour after hour uh, to try to get to vote have largely, that's been part of the reason that that has been uh, eliminated. It's made it easier for everybody to vote, not just those with a medical condition or senior citizens, uh, but also people that because of their work schedule have difficulty voting, uh, people in low income areas uh, that may not be able to get off of work, uh, it makes it easier for them. And it's never been, at least since, since 2004, it really hasn't been a partisan issue, at least in this county, it hasn't been a partisan issue. There's been broad agreement with the Board of Elections, Democrats and Republicans, that this just made sense. It made sense administratively. It made sense because it supported the democratic process. Um, today's uh, unfortunate vote, I think, and the previous vote that was taken in the legislature with House Bill 194 has started to really turn back the clock. And the question is, do we want to go back to those problems that were documented all across the country that happened in Ohio in 2004? Or, or haven't we shown that there's a better way to do it? So. Unfortunately, this has for some reason become a partisan issue now in, in 2011. So, I'm, again, earlier today, as I'm sure all of you know, there is a vote, a vote that happened uh, with the Board of Elections, which, again, it's, it's so unfortunate that uh, it was split along party lines two to two, whether or not the Board of Elections would continue to run the same type of vote by mail process that they had in years past. Now, the issue is now going to be squarely in front of uh, Secretary of State Houston. And what what we're we're asking for is that in a very expeditious way that he break this deadlock. Uh, in Cuyahoga County, although there's other counties that this is, is going to be affecting from what I've heard down in Hamilton County, and that he will very expeditiously and, 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 and in a, a nonpartisan way uh, break this deadlock, really not on behalf of one political party or another, but on behalf of on behalf of the of the voters, particularly of Cuyahoga County. So he can solve this whole problem by doing that now. We also are looking at all of our legal uh, options in terms of trying, if the Board of Elections can't do this, or they are prevented by the Secretary of State from having this full program, if, if we have an option uh, to do it ourselves with Cuyahoga County. So we've been looking at those, our legal options as far as that goes. The money to, to run this program has already been appropriated and had already been transferred to the Board of Elections. There wouldn't be an additional dime, in our opinion, that would have to be appropriated if the other part of county government ended up taking on this particular function. So we're going to be looking at that um, as an option, but we hope that that is not necessary. I, uh, we, I wrote a letter earlier today after hearing about the, uh, the, uh, the board deadlock uh, to Secretary of State. Houston, where I made all of these same arguments, and I asked him to very expeditiously break this deadlock. He has the ability, which had been done actually by uh, his predecessor, to ask the Board of Elections to expedite kind of the certification of their record. If, if my understanding is correct, they have about 14 days. They have 14 days to certify uh, their their decision or their, the, the, the reasoning behind their decision uh, where, that they cast their vote on earlier today, but they can do it quicker than that, and he can ask them to do it quicker than that. Now, what's the? Why is there the need for 
speed in this case because these elections are going on now. This is causing uncertainty with the elections that we have uh, happening all across this county. So there are very important municipal elections, school levies, uh, all kinds of issues that are going to be on the ballot. And this is, this is really throwing a wrench into the work, not just the work of the, of the Board of Elections, but also all of those campaigns that are trying to operate in a rational and efficient manner. And it is sending a message to the voters for the first time in many years that it's going to be more difficult to vote in 2011 than it was in years previously. And that is taking a step backwards. So we're hoping that Secretary uh, Husted does the right thing quickly. And if he doesn't, uh, we're going to look at our, our legal options, both from an a, a administrative and a, and a budgetary process of what we can do to try to pick up the slack if, if we can. Any uh, any questions? Yes. What yes, specific? I, I apologize. I'm That's just okay. coming on duty. What sure. specifically did the board do today? Well, and there's there's some folks here that are from the board of elections that that I'm sure would be available uh, uh, if they're willing to make comments. Uh, Sandy McNair, who's on the who's on the who's on the board, but the, the process has been in recent years that the board of elections will send an absentee ballot application to all eligible voters, and 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 make that available to them. And, and instead of waiting for the voter to initiate that, letting them know that that option is there for them. And unfortunately, uh, even though the money had already been appropriated, it's already been done now successfully in two or three elections since 2008, uh, the, the, the board uh, deadlocked two to two as to whether or not that was gonna happen this year. So now it's gonna go to the Secretary of State to break that deadlock. The problem is gonna be is if uh, if the wheels of justice, so to speak, are slow in this in this matter, we're gonna we're gonna miss the window of opportunity here to do it, because absentee voting start would start when would it start? Uh, well, it would it would depend on the on the primary and it would depend on the on the uh, on the suburb. But there will be suburbs that will be having absentee voting very very shortly. What's so it doesn't it doesn't end voting by mail. It just ends. The application process? It does, but it's a huge difference. There's, and the statistics show that there are people who, for the first time, really realized that they had that they had that option. I mean, we've had a system for a long time that if you were bound and determined to show up no matter what and vote, no matter how long you needed to wait or if you needed to miss work or, or risk losing your job, you could vote. It's not that isn't the issue. The issue is how do you make it as convenient and accessible as possible and if you're doing something like the process that they've had here successfully for several years why would you change it and, and the answer is there really is no reasonable public policy reason to, to make it less accessible it just doesn't doesn't make any sense yeah yes, have you heard any reasons why not everyone is in favor why not everyone voted for well, is it just political well, they, they can they can speak for themselves, but look, we're, we're not operating in a vacuum here. There have been a number of what I would call voter suppression efforts all across the country, and it is not just happening in Ohio. It's happening in states all across the country. And there's a there's a philosophical difference between some people about um, how easy do we need to make it uh, to vote and to register to vote, and that that has played itself out in a number of public policy decisions. And and I think that the History is definitely on, on the side of trying to make it as easy and, and as accessible as possible. In my opinion, we should be moving to a, a vote by mail system whenever possible, whenever possible, and looking at other ways to make it even easier to vote, whether it be voting online or having uh, additional days where you can vote. But this is uh, one of the few examples of us actually taking a step, taking a step backward. Have you had a chance to speak to the board members who voted against? I have not. I have not. Any other questions? Thanks, thanks very much. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you.